One of the reasons that I like older classical desserts is they tend to surprise people, which has led me to uh, this kind of showstopper dessert that I do that is baked Alaska. For the amount of work that goes into it and the amount of flash and satisfaction you get, this is the best party dessert that I know of. Baked Alaska, of course, American uh, dessert uh, that is nothing more than uh, cake, ice cream, and meringue that's cooked. And it fell out of fashion uh, because it was overdone. Uh, was certainly during the 50s and, and 60s, a lot of people did it, they did it badly. Um, because it requires very, shall we say, aggressive application of high levels of heat. When you're making a party version of this, it's really a lot tougher, unless you've got a very, very big convection oven or a, a secret weapon. So uh, here in uh, my kitchen, and uh, this is how uh, Baked Alaska goes, I like to do two different ice creams. This is strawberry, we're gonna start with that one. So into the mixer. I like to make my own bases because I like to make my own bases, but I have made this dish with melted ice cream that I have simply returned with other stuff in it and then refreeze the ice cream. Um, you know, cheating? Yes, I don't really have a problem with that. Now obviously that will not turn into ice cream all by itself, but with the introduction of a little liquid nitrogen, I think you will see that will change very, very quickly. Please, when you're handling this at home, use some kind of protective uh, mitt and protective eyewear. I'm not going to because I'm a risk taker and I'm a professional with very good insurance. Because I live near a hospital, there are a lot of uh, gas places around uh, where you can buy stuff like liquid nitrogen. And the, and the nice thing about having liquid nitrogen around is you can make ice cream instantly with nothing but a mixer. You can do this in a regular ice cream machine, but that wouldn't be nearly as much fun now, would it? That took what, like 30 seconds? Whatever you do, do not put your tongue on that bowl. It's tempting, I know, because I told you not, don't do it, it will stick and you'll rip all the flesh off of your tongue. All right, into pan number one, and straight into the freezer. I would simply repeat with the same amount of chocolate. Those ice creams get frozen in standard 13 inch baking pans. You bake up a chiffon cake or sheet cake, but I'll be really honest with you, you can make this from cake mix at the market, and there's absolutely no reason not to. And you freeze it, so everything's getting really, really cold. Then you make an Italian meringue, which means that it's basically egg whites that are whipped and then stabilized with a boiled syrup. That is built on uh, eight ounces of sugar, four of corn syrup, two ounces of water cooked to 240 degrees Fahrenheit. That will make for a tasty and stable meringue. <coughs> While you're whipping the eggs, pour it in, let it thicken, put it in a piping bags and leave them in the fridge. So you uh, take your favorite cutting board, you put your cake right in the middle, ice cream, ice cream. You pipe on the meringue. Then flame on. Most of you are not in possession of a super awesome uh, red dragon like this. And if you're not, that's okay. You can uh, finish this off uh, under your broiler on high, or you can use a, a regular hardware store uh, blowtorch. It's just gonna take a little bit longer. The outside of the meringue is crispy, brown, caramelized, right? You've got the soft, gooey stickiness of the meringue itself, which is almost like a marshmallow. Then you hit the cold sweetness of the ice cream. And then you move into the, uh, the soft, pillow-like texture of the cake. This is pretty much the best dessert you ever ate, ever, period. Yeah. Good daughter.